So let's just bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessing on his word. Lord, we come to your word tonight. And Lord, your word is truth and it's life to those of us who find it. Anoint your word to each and every ear, in each and every heart, in this room and online. That your word might come alive to us and we might learn to learn, use it when we need it most in our lives. We ask this in your name. Amen. Tonight we're going to be coming from the Gospel of the Day, and it's from the sixth chapter of Luke, starting with the 20th verse. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you for ye shall be filled. Blessed are you that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye that when men shall hate you, and they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and shall cast out your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For the manner, for in the like manner did your fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you that when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers, to the false prophets. One of the things that we learn when we're learning to live as people that are part of drawing closer to Jesus in chapter, and I know for myself it's taken me well, hopefully it's not a lifetime yet, but it's taken a long time because that would mean it's over. <laughs> but it's taken a long time for me to even understand it. To live spiritual poverty, chastity, and obedience is an exercise that takes our whole lives because it goes down to the very character of who we are. Here we see Jesus in a sermon that they call the Beatitudes. It's also been called the woes. And I want to go through it for a minute because I think it bears repeating for ourselves. First of all, it says, blessed, blessed, blessed. And when it talks about being blessed, that word for blessed conveys a deep sense of happiness. Well-being, that, I'm going to preface, that's not dependent on outside forces. I'm going to say that again. When it says blessed, that means also another word for it would be happy. But this happiness is not one that you would think when, when remember when you'd get a new car and you'd sit in it and you'd smell that beautiful new car feeling or suddenly you come into some money or, or whatever it is that makes you happy. You, you feel like you're invincible for a moment until you get the car payment, or someone scratches it. <laughs> the happiness that this word is talking about, it's not conveying that you would receive your happiness or your blessedness from an outside force. It's saying that in the midst of the outside forces that tend to be negative sometimes, or positive, your happiness, your blessedness is dependent on what's going on inside of you. The inner, and, and, and that happiness, that blessedness, is part of the inner state of righteousness and contentment because you have been with the Lord. This is what chapter is all about. It's about becoming closer to Christ, about becoming conscious of his presence in your life. And so when Jesus was on the mount here of the of, of beatitudes he's talking about learning to go live from the inside out as opposed from the outside in 
And then it says, woe to you. And the reason why it says woe to you is because you've depended on the outside and the outside, guess what? Is not dependable. And so it's not wise to depend on outside forces for your happiness or for your contentment. <clears throat> when he says, blessed are you who are poor for, your, for the kingdom of God is yours. Jesus is highlighting that when you are blessed in that state, and that state is total dependency on God himself in your life. The total dependency of knowing that you need his grace, that you recognize that you need salvation, and that you're open to receiving his kingdom in your life. That's not easy because our whole entire life in this body of ours, it has been longing for outside comfort, outside gratification, outside everything. But the work of the Spirit is teaching you how to live from the inside out, to live in a place of contentment. And I preface it in my own life, learning. <laughs> Because don't catch me on a wrong day. Because <laughs> I've fallen off the bandwagon. <laughs> and I can't imagine that all of you would do the same thing, but I'm sure you do. That's the struggle. That's the, the wrestling with the angel in your life until you recognize and realize that he's bringing you into a new character. It says to you at the same tone, it says, woe to you who are rich. Remember, to be rich externally it might give you a temporary satisfaction. But Jesus says you've already received your reward and your comfort. But when you have your self-sufficiency and knowing who he is in you, what a difference. That's what it means to be in chapter. That's what it means to learn to live in spiritual poverty, chastity, and obedience. Well, chastity, typically it relates to, we think of being pure or having pure thoughts. And we should. But he says, blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. This hunger seen as a longing for what? Righteousness. And what is righteousness? It's the fulfillment of your poverty, isn't it? And it ultimately, it satisfies you when you receive it from him and he washes you clean, not because you've tried to be clean. The word of God says that you cannot be clean on your own. The only way that you can be clean is through the blood of Jesus Christ and you are washed in the water of the word. And so all you've done is position yourself to be in the presence of God so that when you're in the presence of God, he makes you chase. He makes you, you start to live in the pure because righteousness is right thinking. At the same time, he says, woe to you that when everyone speaks well of you, oh, you are great. What a person. and you get dependent on that worldly approval, guess what's happened? You've lost your dependency on God's approval in your life. So a chaste individual prioritizes in their life where they receive their good fortune. It's not dependent on the outside world. It's dependent on your relationship with Jesus Christ from within. And so when you receive the praises of men, be careful. Ask yourself the question, where have I prioritized? Have I prioritized that God is my refuge? That he is my safe place? He is my strong tower? My trust is in him? Because believe me, in the world, they'll praise you one day and curse you the next. 
Your dependency is on Him. Your obedience to God's command is central in our lives. But what is that obedience? I submit to you, it's not obedience to the law of Moses. That's what Jesus was trying to teach. He becomes the law. And he uses the law to bring you into grace. If we use the law and we're thinking outside, we look at people and what do we do? We judge them. Because we say to ourselves, well, they're not living a pure life. They're doing this. They're doing that. Now, there has to be righteous judgment. There has to be wisdom. But love is the ultimate law. What did Jesus say? He said that that the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets is to what? To love. So blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. This weeping represents the sorrow of repentance and obedience to God's will in your life. When you submit to your will, to the will of the Lord Jesus Christ, not to the law, How many laws did we put in our own lives that have put us into bondage because we think that we can, we can't do this. What are they going to say about this? What are we going to do about that? We put ourselves into a total knot. I can tell you from experience. The obedience is to the will of God and the will of God is what? To love and to be loved. To have righteous judgment to have that consideration for another. When you find yourself in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not find yourself asking yourself, remember when you went to driver's ed and you were in school and you get into the car and you look out the side mirror and you look at the one in the rear view mirror, you look to make sure you're thinking, look at the speedometer. Making sure you're doing what? Following the law. But when the law of Christ is in your life, it should become a natural thing because it's something that's taking place. It's alive within you. And God's guidance is in your life. And what should you be finding? Joy. Joy. And he says, Woe unto you when everyone speaks well of you. Where can... You can also find that God is warning us against being disobedient to that spirit. Because who are you? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You can't help it when the Spirit of God is in you. It's the same Spirit that is in every person who has accepted Christ into their life. And so when we look at life, through the lens of poverty, chastity, and obedience, we're taking on the attributes that God's called everybody to. And when he's called everybody to it, he knows that when you live in that way, what happens? In the midst of trial and tribulation, you learn to have joy. When someone praises you and thinks the world of you, you have a balanced life inside of you. And you realize your dependency on your bridegroom. Because he doesn't call you a servant anymore. He calls you friend. He calls you his bride. He goes further. He calls you a joint heir. He's not only your bridegroom, but he's your maker. And so tonight, as we come together in our chapter evening, we should be remembering the attributes that Christ lived by, because these are them. He became poor, that you might become rich. Is your poverty making somebody else rich? In the spirit? Only you can answer that question. Is your chastity living in the righteousness and knowing that you've been cleaned up by God yourself, by the word of your testimony, and what else? The blood of the lamb by the washing of the water of the word in your life. Redemption comes not because you live the law. It comes because you are in the presence of Almighty God. A miracle. 
absolute miracle. And then when you find yourself in that place of love, you can't help but be obedient because you do want to do nothing that would hurt that presence dwelling in you. So remember, when we started this small teaching tonight, being blessed, blessed, blessed is an absolute dependent on an inside force that's inside of you, not outside forces. So when you look at the outside forces, it's not hard to discern. If the outside forces are getting you upset, having problems with them, then you've got your eye, where? On the wrong place. Get your eyes on him. In the scriptures, there's an old saying I'll close with. It says that the Lord has his eye on Israel, that Israel is the apple of his eye. I submit to you today that we know that there's the land of Israel. We know that there's a person named Israel. But did you know that when God had his eye on Israel, he's talking to your redeemed you inside of you. He always has his eye upon you. You are the apple of his eye. That's your redeemed inner person. That's a miracle. So live knowing his love. Learn to live out your spiritual vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And let the joy of the Lord be your strength. And may the Lord add a blessing to his word. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. For Lord, you have given us such an amazing gift. We ask, Lord, that we might learn to rest in you, in that temple that you have made us, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that, Lord, deep down inside, where we live and tick, where poverty, chastity, and obedience come to life, we would learn to live out our walk with you. We ask this in your precious name. Amen and amen. So